Okay, so here we have to prove by the extended principle of mathematical induction the following statement that um, holds an inequality. 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 3 plus all the way until 1 over square root of n is greater than square root of n for n is greater than or equal to 2. So the extended principle differs only through the fact that you're not starting from the n value of 1, but you're following the constraint. In this case, the constraint is start from 2 and above, right? So you cannot go from 1. Okay, you cannot start from 1. You have to go from 2 and on and on. Okay, so pretty much it's the same algorithm. But the only thing that differs is, is you're not going to write out P of 1 statement. You're going to write P of 2 statement first. So we're going to write P2 statement first. Now, P2 statement... Um, takes into account the fact that you're talking about two terms because in this on this left side like in the in equation problems that we've done there were n terms on the left side here there are two terms so p2 we're talking about two terms so 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 is supposed to be uh, supposed to be is supposed to be greater than square root of 2, right? Because we're evaluating the n value of 2 here. Now, pk statement reads uh, everything on the left side. You're just going to substitute n with k. 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 plus all, uh, 1 over square root of 3 plus all the way until you get to 1 over square root of k, and that is greater than square root of fk. And pk plus 1 statement, of course, is going to be substituting this k with k plus 1. 1 over square root of 1, plus 1 over square root of 2, plus 1 over square root of 3, plus all the way until we get to 1 over square root of k plus 1 is greater than square root of k plus 1, right? So now we have to show that p2 is true. And we have to verify that. So 1 over 1, 1 over square root of 1 is 1 over 1. 1 over square root of 2, we can leave it alone. Okay, and let's see what the left side is equal to. So we have to transform the left side in such a way that we show that it, the left side will be greater than radical 2. Right, so it, it's going to be 1 plus 1 over radical 2. And then that is going to be equal to, we can do, uh, we can combine it into a single fraction like this, right? Radical 2 plus 1 divided by radical 2. And then we're going to have what? We know that this is greater than radical 1 plus 1 over radical 2. Right? Because radical 1 is smaller than radical 2. If we leave everything the same, but except change the radical 1 instead of radical 2, we know this is going to be a smaller quantity because we just decreased the numerator. Okay, and we know this is equal to radical 1 is 1, right? So 1 plus 1 divided by radical 2, okay, which is equal to 2 over radical 2, which is equal to radical 2. So we just showed successfully, using these three pieces here, um, we showed that... Right, which is equal to this left side precisely. Right, so this left side is greater than radical two. So I can in indicate that with blue. So as you can see, we just showed. Well, maybe I should indicate this with yellow. We just showed that there is indeed greater than sign here. Okay, so that was proven true. P2 is, pr is definitely true. Now, the next one is to assume that P2 
pk is true for any k value, right? k value such that k is greater than greater than 2, right? Because we already tested the 2 value here. We, we showed it was true, so we have to choose k greater than 2. So then, if we assume that pk statement is true for arbitrary k value such that the k is greater than 2, then pk plus 1 statement becomes the following. From the assumption that pk statement is true, we can build a pk plus 1 statement including the last term for the pk statement. So in other words, we're going to have 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 3 plus all the way until the last term of the pk statement. But also, since this is a pk plus 1 statement, we have to use one more term for this pk plus 1 statement, which is going to be what? Which is going to be 1 over square root of k plus 1. Okay? And that should be greater than... Now, we're just going to copy this side because we're talking about pk plus 1 statement, right? So, square root of k plus 1. So now what we need to compare is this. We have to compare this statement with this statement. pk versus pk plus 1. And why am I comparing this pk plus 1 in particular? Because in this pk plus 1, we did not show the last term of the pk statement. You see, it's lacking. Whereas here, we did show it. That's why we're going to compare. So notice that right away, this, this part is appearing here. But the only difference is this last term here is absent here. So logically, if we add this term on this side of the pk statement, we should also add the same term on the right side of this pk statement and then basically we should transform it into the pk plus 1 statement but then we would have to verify the right side just like we did with the equation problems before so let's add that let's add that so then also so i'm just gonna indicate that pk plus 1 statement can be written as 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over square root of 2, plus 1 over square root of 3, plus all the way, plus 1 over square root of k. And we're adding this term to the pk plus 1 statement, right? So we're going to indicate this with red plus. We're going to add this guy. Okay. So what becomes now the gr greater than sign square root of k plus this red one that we added in order to make this statement a pk plus 1 statement, right? Plus 1 over square root of k plus 1. Okay, so now that we've done that, now that we've done that, what happens? We have to, we already made the pk plus 1 sides match, right? The left sides match, definitely. So we need to show the statement being true, assuming that the pk statement was true. Okay? So we have to verify that this side, okay, is going to be greater than this side. Okay? Because if it is greater, then this side being greater than this is definitely going to be greater than this. Right? We're going to show square root of k plus 1 over square root of k plus 1 should be greater than square root of k plus 1. So this is what we're going to show. So now, working, the, uh, working this side, let's, let's figure this out. Square root of k plus 1 over square root of k plus 1. What is that equal to? Let's see. So then... Uh, 
we want to make this into a single fraction, right? So we need to we need to multiply this square root of k by square root of k plus one. So square root of k times square root of k plus one. Okay. And then plus one divided by square root of k plus one. Right? And that is going to be greater than square root of k times square root of k plus 1 over square root of k plus 1. And why is it going to be greater? Because notice that k is smaller than k plus 1. So square root of k will be definitely smaller than square root of k plus 1. So if you multiply the smaller to the same square root of k, you will get the smaller fraction because uh, the smaller numerator because plus one is is the same as this plus one. Everything is the same except that you're making this guy smaller than it was before, right? Because we're dealing with positive numbers, k, positive. Uh, we're talking about natural numbers, right? So k is smaller than k plus one. So this thing will be smaller as a result because the denominator is also the same, right? So definitely greater. And now let's work out what this is equal to. Square root of k times square root of k is going to be k, right? k plus 1 divided by square root of k plus 1. So look what happens. k plus 1 divided by the square root of k plus 1 is exactly square root of k plus 1. Okay? If you can't see it right away, just uh, rationalize the denominator. You will get k plus 1, and here you will get k, k plus 1 times square root of k plus 1. So the k plus 1s would cancel out. You would just uh, be left be left off with uh, square root of k plus 1. Okay, so this means, this means, this means 1 over square root of 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 3 plus all the way until 1 over square root of k plus 1 over square root of k plus 1 is greater than square root of k plus 1. Um, so we can say that this holds true making pk plus 1 statement true. Okay? By the extended principle of mathematical induction, Pn is true for all n greater than or equal to 2. Be sure that you always indicate because this is the extended, right? There's a constraint. N, N must be greater than or equal to 2. All right, so I hope I was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.